Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Minecraft plugin tutorial series. In today's episode, I'm going to teach you how to add custom commands so that we can actually spawn a custom cow and only make this cow explode. If I spawn a normal cow and I right click, it's not going to do anything. But if I click this cow, it's going to give it a nice little blow. So welcome to this tutorial. And this is what we're going to be covering. I'm going to teach you how to create custom commands with something called command executor interface. I'm also going to show you how to enter, how to use plugin.yml to register these commands in bucket. And then finally, we're going to be doing some tab completion stuff because that's also what you guys requested. So please check out the blog post below this video for more in-depth explanations, including the link to the source code, because I'm going to be posting the force code full full source code completely for free for you guys in the blog post below. Now, there's a couple of useful links, the first one being all bucket commands, which you can see if you go to bucket.fandom.com. I'm also going to be pasting this link in the blog video. And if you open up this one, you're just going to see all these different commands uh, from Minecraft and from bucket in case you didn't know them. Also, if you wonder what you can or cannot put inside the plugin.yml, which is this file right here. By the way, please check out the second video in this tutorial series to understand how we created this code right here, because we're going to be starting, I think the second video deals with the code creation at the very beginning. So if you want to know what to put inside the plugin file, go to the other link at the docs paper IO. Again, the full link will be available at the blog post, uh, blog post command at the link in the description below to my website and then the blog post there. And as you can see, all the options are specified right here. All you have to do today, we deal with the command section. So first of all, if you want to create a new command, you have to register it inside the bucket section inside the plugin.yaml section so that the bucket or spigot or paper, what have you, can actually see that the plugin has a command. So the way we're going to do it, we can just copy this code as it is, and then we can just paste it right here. There we go. And now we can actually change this command right here to the main label of the command, which is just going to be cow. That means if I go into the game and I type slash cow, this command will run. The description of this command will be very simple. This will simply spawn an exploding cow. And then the usage is going to be very simple. It's just the cow. And then say, I want to type if the cow is a baby or not. If I type in just a cow, it's just going to spawn an adult. Or if I type in cow baby, it's going to spawn as a nice little baby. And then the command Elias means, means what other things than cow can I place? Uh, can I put in the chat to run the same command? So if I want to spawn the cow by not only calling cow, but also calling cow canoon, then this is the Elias for the main command that I can leave here. And then the permission can be, I don't know, cow canoon dot command dot cow, very simple. And the permission message can be the default. You don't have the permission to, oops, to spawn, to spawn a cow, an exploding cow. There we go. Very simple. Uh, guys, also make sure if you write text into these YML files, it is a good practice to use brackets. Okay, so put them into brackets right here, because especially if you want to put colors like this one, or you want to put in uh, single brackets or stuff like that, or even uh, columns, it can break things a little bit. So it is a good practice to put text in the in the double quotes, or you can use either. So you can use single quotes or double quotes right here like that. And it's going to always load properly. I've seen people sometimes be confused about it, uh, but that's just how it works. You, you don't have to use it in here in particular, but if I would to make this, uh, this a colorful message, which I'm, I can deal with in another, another video, I can show how to deal with these commands, uh, colors, including, you know, hex codes, then you definitely need to place uh, double quotes around it. Good. Now we have that. It's time to actually come up with a custom class. We can just give it a nice name called cow command. And as I mentioned, we're going to be implementing something called a command executor. And I can also implement tap executor. Although I think that the command executor should have the tap. No, it does not have it. Good. So we just can, we can implement multiple interfaces by simply separating them by comma. First one being the command executor, which is going to force us to implement the on command method. And if you start typing on and you pre press 
uh, control plus space, it should give you a hint in your IntelliJ. And now if you just double click this one, it should actually implement the whole command for you. Awesome. That's the first one. And the other one being on, no, that one is actually called tap complete. There we go, on tap complete. Again, there we go. Now you have these commands. Don't worry about these annotations right here. You actually don't need to have them. IntelliJ just places them because they are inherited from the uh, from the interface as they are here. So first one, the first argument, this is the sender. This can be a console. This can be a, a, a player. And this can be also, I think, an offline player. I'm not sure how many things can this be, but this can definitely be a console or a living player. So we got to check that. So if the sender is not a player, we're just going to say only players can use this command. Awesome. And the AI here, it works properly and it auto completed roughly what I would want to say. And then we simply return true. What happens if we return false? Bucket will send us the usage message. Okay. If we return true, Bucket is going to send us absolutely nothing because the command was handled. So that is how to implement this basic command. Uh, I'm moving on to the other thing, command right here is the, is the same command. Basically, if you type in command dot get here, these things are the exact same as you're supposed to be having here. Okay. So this is just informative purely for cosmetics. I've personally never used this here. Then the label, the label could be cow, or I think the label could also be cow canoe, depends on what you type in a chat. And then the argument simply means what comes after the command label. So if I type in slash cow, hello world, this is pretty, then the cow is the label, hello is the zero argument. So if I want to get that, I simply get arcs zero. Let me just space it out a little bit. If I want to get the second argument, I simply get arcs one and so on and so forth. Okay. So that's how it works. It can be a bit confusing for beginners, right? But that's how it works in Java. Uh, if you don't know Java basics, if the, the syntax right here causes you, you know, your head to spin a little bit more, please note that we have a full Java plus Minecraft plugin course where I give you personalized help twice per week. I'm actually doing live calls with you guys. Plus there's seven weeks of core, uh, co content, which is on demand. It's always available. Plus there is an entire Java course. It's called Project Orion and you can get it in the link in the description of this video. And I'll be more than happy to show you guys this more in depth. However, for, for now, Let's just stick with this for now. So if someone types in cow, we also have to see if they typed in baby right here. So if, so we can just say is baby and this can be false. However, if the orcs length is at least one, that means that someone typed the first argument and the orcs zero equals to baby. And we can also use equals ignore case so that someone can also type baby, right? It's going to match. Then it's going to be true. And this is just the basic. I may change the code later on. And now it's time to actually spawn the command. So we can get the player because now we know that the player is not a console. So we can cast the player to uh, the, the sender to the player like this one. And then we can simply get the world and we can spawn uh, a cow and the player location, for example, and then we can spawn a cow class right here. That's going to return the cow instance. And then if is baby, we can simply call cow set baby. However, we can simplify this so I can just, just copy this right here. And I can place this right here and then I can delete the whole bunch of code block that is now not being used. Awesome. However, I want to make sure that the command is high quality. Remember coding standards. So what if someone types in cow baby world, right? This is not good. So if the commands argument are actually greater than one, we want to return false. And then bucket should tell the player uh, this usage right here. Good. So that one should work. Now, the thing is that I promised you in the very beginning, if we click the cow, we have to mark the cow with a custom metadata so that this cow is different from all the other cows and only this cow explodes. So we're going to set the metadata for the cow. The name of the key of the metadata is just going to be cow canoon. And then the metadata value in bucket, it's actually something called a fixed metadata value, which stores 
which takes in an instance of our plugin, which we can go into our main class to get. So I can just type in public static get instance, and then I can just reference the the buckets way of getting the plugin instance. This will return this. It's going to return this. However, I have access to the get instance from the entirety for all different classes of this plugin. Again, this is basic Java stuff. If you don't know how static works, please uh, make sure to learn Java before. And this will be then callable from anywhere. So I can go and I can, I can call instance. And then the fixed metadata value has the object as value. So think about metadata as a hash map, right, in Java. So you can place anything. It can be calcanon as a key. And then here can be anything. This can be one. Uh, this can be, I don't know, a, st a string, a number, a, a float, a boolean. But it does not really matter what we place here because we are only interested in checking if the cow has this metadata. Now, the limitation for this is if you restart the server, this metadata will get lost. If you don't want this to get lost, look into persistent data container. This has been added in Minecraft 1.14. I don't have time to cover this in this video, but I may make a lesson about the persistent data container later on so that you will always you can always spawn entities and they're actually going to remain with the custom uh, custom data on the map, even after the server has been reloaded. For, for now, this is enough. Good. And also for fun, you've noticed at the beginning of this video, the cow had a custom name. So I can set a custom name to uh, milk me and I can give it a nice chat color red. By the way, guys, don't worry about the fact that this is depreciated. This is just depreciated because paper is essentially uh, is essentially rewriting the system of bucket and they're using a different library for custom components but i don't want to torture you guys with more stuff than necessary for this video we can cover the adventure api later on but for now you can just go with the default alder api that puts that makes it possible for you to put in the strings right away like this one and that's it we also need to make sure that the custom name is always visible otherwise we're not going to see it unless we pointer our cursor directly on the cow Okay, that's it. Now, now the cow has been spawned. Also make sure to return true here. And then the on tap complete. So what we can do right here, we can actually just return uh, a list, an empty list to make sure that there's no tap completion because if you return null, this will return all player names for bucket. However, if, if the arcs say R1, I think, then we can just return baby right here that's it and I, i'm not really sure if this is zero or one this always trips me up i do recommend you guys maybe print out the size of arguments if you struggle with this you can have a debug message right here right that always helps because i if you are as forgetful as i so essentially if i type in say cow and then I press tap, it should automatically offer the baby to be completed. There we go. Awesome. Final thing before we hop off, we have to register the command and we have to make some adjustments here in the entity listener. So how do you actually register the command? Very simple. You get the command. This will then try to get the command based on the information from the file. And then you set the executor of the command being a new instance of the cow command. Okay, a bit confusing here. What is the executor? Well, it's basically just a bunch of code that we just implemented, it's going to take care of actually running the command because Bucket knows that there is a command, but it does not know where to execute it. So now it knows both, okay? You can also look into setting the tab completer. You can have it in a different class, but I don't recommend it. And you can also change a bunch of stuff here. Essentially, you're just overriding these options, which you don't have to. Good. Now, let me make a final adjustment right here. Let me just get the entity, the right-click entity right away. And then I can just make a couple of couple of uh, shorthands methods and then we have to check if the entity has the metadata there we go and i can also get the player and we can also check if the player get item in hand get type is a bucket and you don't you don't have to use the depreciated method here you can just get the inventory and then get item in main hand but for me uh, i know bucket is not gonna remove the depreciated method and it's way quicker right and that's fine too if you are coding for Minecraft 1.9 plus, what do you need to do? You also need to check if the event get hand is 
a normal hand because this event is actually fired twice one for your right hand the other times for your left hand and this code i only want to make sure that this code works for the main hand it does not work for the left hand which is called the off hand so i should have may maybe probably covered this in the last video but i did not want it to be that long uh, so now you have it and you have a full code everything works as it should let pr let's pray and let's compile together let's see if that works okay guys if i spawn a normal cow i can click it and i can click it as much as i want to holding the bucket and it's not gonna explode thankfully but if i type in cow you can also see now that it, the baby argument is being top completed and if i try typing something more you can see in the console the size increases right so this is really handy. Now it's going to just tell us cow baby. But if I type in cow baby, actually it's going to spawn a little cow. And if I right click the little cow, it should blow. However, if I right click without holding a bucket, it'll just, it will do also absolutely nothing. Also guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Everything works. I'm very happy. Again, check out Project Orion course if you want to learn how to build amazing plugins and we can actually go 10 times more deeply than we went in this quick video for commands. That's about it for commands. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. See you next time.